Hi everyone, I am Ravi. I am Boundary SME based out of Singapore, covering Asia Pacific region. So today's topic is passwordless authentication with HashiCorp Boundary and Vault. For those who are new to Boundary, Boundary is our secure access management offering that enables identity-based access control for dynamic infrastructure for human users. So these are some of the top challenges that the enterprises face today in securing access to their infrastructure resources. The first challenge enterprises face is as they move their workloads to dynamic infra of clouds. The user access workflow that we often see today was built for static environments. In today's dynamic environments, IPs are ephemeral, and that makes it extremely difficult to manage secure access using IP addresses that are constantly changing. The second challenge is around static secrets that are often long-lived and never rotated. So when end users try to access their resources for example, a database server or SSH to an application server, they would often pull those credentials from a spreadsheet or other shared resource. This practice exposes the enterprise since credential leaks is one of the top attack vectors and costliest to remediate. Also, users would typically have to go through multiple hops before they could connect to their target resources. For example, a corporate VPN server or a SSH question host, each of which would require its own set of credentials. This leads to secrets management problem as the users join or leave your enterprises. And the last challenge is around exposing private networks to end users. Currently, many teams use a combination of SSH jump boxes and VPNs to authenticate users and route them to their desired target. The problem with this workflow is once the users are authenticated, they have complete access to your network, which increases the attack surface area for SecOps team. So Boundary provides a workflow built for accessing hosts and critical systems in dynamic environments. Boundary allows you to automate access to your critical infrastructure for users wherever it resides. Think of it as a jump box replacement. First, the user logs in using an IDP of your choice like Okta, Azure Active Directory, or GitHub. This integration with Boundary helps authenticate users. The onboarding and offboarding of employees is much easier with Boundary as changes made in your identity providers are automatically reflected in Boundary. Boundary also allows you to configure fine-grained rule-based access policies that authorizes which systems users can access and the actions they can take based on their role. Next, Boundary automates the connection to hosts for users through continuous service discovery and access configuration as workloads are deployed or updated. These dynamic host catalogs are critical in cloud-based environments where IPs are ephemeral, so operators do not have to constantly update their access lists. And finally, when a user decides to access a host or service, the native integration with Vault provides them with just-in-time credentials that is never exposed to end user for that particular session. And since Boundary is acting as a time-limited proxy to private endpoints, you avoid exposing the entire network to them. So these are the key capabilities offered by Boundary. The first is identity-based access management to critical infrastructure. It allows operators to create fine-grained role-based access controls outlining which targets the role can access. When a user attempts to access a host or service, the native integration with Vault provides just-in-time passwordless authentication, ensuring secrets are never exposed to the end user. Later, we will also see a demo of this feature. Next, Boundary enables automated service discovery that allows to deal with dynamic services at scale without requiring to continuously change the connection information. Administrators can automate these configurations and discovery of hosts and services as they are provisioned using the Terraform provider or using REST APIs. And lastly, administrators can get fine-grained visibility into every session created with Boundary, which provide answers to questions like, which identity access which system, when did they access it, and when access was terminated. So now let us see how Boundary enables users to access target systems without exposing credentials to them. In order for a user to access the target system, it first needs to authenticate with Boundary. Boundary's control plane delegates user authentication to identity provider of your choice. Once authenticated, user would be provided with the list of targets they are authorized to access. Again, this is based on fine-grained 
role-based access policies that are configured by an administrator. Next, when the user wants to connect to a target system, it would require credentials specific to the target system. For example, if a user is trying to connect to a database server, it would need database user ID password. So boundaries control plane, so its native integration with HashiCorp Vault retrieves dynamic just-in-time credentials based on user's role. The control plane then brokers the user's session to a worker node with those dynamic credentials, which then proxies the user's session to the target system. We will see this workflow during the demo. Boundary supports two options when it comes to credentials that are required to access the target systems. They are credential brokering and credential injection. So what is the difference between the two? With credential brokering, boundary controllers check out credentials from Vault and return them back to users and clients. In this workflow, Boundary acts as a broker of the credential. Whereas with credential injection, controllers instead return credentials to boundary workers and create a session to a target where the user or client never has access to the credential. This workflow is called credential injection because the credential is injected into a worker session instead of being passed back to the client. Currently, Boundary supports credential injection for SSH-based access. Now, before I switch to demo, let me quickly walk through the use case I'm planning to show today. So I have these two remote hosts in my AWS private network. One is the database server, and the other is some Linux-based application server. I also have two types of user roles in my organization, analyst and admin. Users belonging to analyst role should have permission to access database server for performing read-only operations. These users should not have access to the application server whereas admin users should be able to access both the database server and the application server. Admin users should be also able to perform all types of operations. So with that background, let me now switch to the demo screen. Boundary provides few interfaces for the end users to connect to their remote targets. On the top left of my screen is the Boundary Desktop. Boundary Desktop is a standalone application that provides a simple interface for browsing and connecting to targets from your local computer. On the bottom left of my screen is the terminal window with boundary CLI. Power users would normally prefer to use command line interface to connect to their remote targets. And on the right is the boundaries web interface, which could be used by administrators to configure boundary resources, such as remote targets, user rules, HashiCorp vault credential store, and fine-grained access policies. So first, I'm going to log in as an analyst pro using Boundary Desktop. As you can see, I have configured OIDC-based authentication for my organization. Let me click on Sign In. So Boundary should delegate authentication to the identity provider that is configured by the administrator. In this case, I have configured Auth0 as the identity provider. I'm now going to log in as an analyst, so let me key in my credentials for this user. So once the authentication is successful, Boundary Desktop would show me the list of targets that I'm authorized to access. In this case, analyst role is allowed to access only the database server. Let me also log in using Boundary CLI, as I'm going to use the command line to connect to the database. So again, Boundary is going to delegate authentication to the identity provider. So now I am authenticated successfully using both the Boundary Desktop and Boundary CLI. So now I should be able to connect to the database server using the analyst role. So let me run this command to connect to the database server. Now, because I have connected as an analyst role, I should be allowed to perform read-only operations. For this demo, I have created a single table called country. So let me see if I'm able to view records in the table. So as expected, I'm able to view all records in this table, but am I allowed to perform any edit operations? Let me try to delete a record. So 
So again, as expected, users belonging to analyst role are not allowed to perform any edit operations. So let me do a quick recap of what we have done so far. So in step one, I authenticated with Boundary as a user belonging to an analyst role. Boundary delegated authentication to Auth0. Then in step two, I connected to a remote database server through Boundary Worker. The credentials required to connect to the database server were brokered by Boundary through its native integration with Vault. Let me also quickly show HCP Boundary and Vault configuration for brokering dynamic credentials. So here I already logged into my Vault server. And if I go to the database secrets engine for Vault, you would see that I have configured two rows, one for the admin user role and the other is for the analyst user role. And for if, you, if I have to show you the analyst role configuration, you will see the type of role is dynamic and the credentials that are generated for this role are valid only for five minutes. And let me also show you very quickly how Boundary retrieves these credentials dynamically from Vault when a user connects to a database target. So if I go to the Boundary web interface, and if I go to these targets for the analyst role, you will see there is this step for broker credentials where I've configured uh, the vault path from where the database credentials will be retrieved dynamically via boundary. So next we will try to log in as an admin user. So let me log out from the boundary desktop and boundary CLI. And let me also log out from the boundary desktop. And this time we are going to log in as the admin user role. So this time, because I have logged in as an admin user, Boundary shows me two targets, one for the database server and the other for the Linux-based application server. And let me also log in from the Boundary CLI. So this time I'm going to connect to database server but using the admin target. And let me run the select query just to confirm I have still have access to the country table. So as expected, admin users are allowed to perform select queries, but this time I should also have permissions to perform to perform edit operations. So let us try to create a new record in this table. Let's create a record for New Zealand. So this time the record was created successfully. There is no error reported. So let's run the select query again, just to confirm the record was created successfully. And yes, uh, now we have like three records in this table. So you just saw how Boundary provides role-based access to remote database servers running in a private network through integration with Vault. Now let me disconnect from the database server. And now for the last uh, use case, I'm going to connect to Linux-based application server using SSH. So as you see, uh, admin user has permission to also access Linux-based application server. So let me run this command to SSH to the application server. So it was that simple. I'm now connected to my application server, which is again running in a private network. Normally you would need a SSH private key to connect to a server. But in this case, Boundary through its native integration with Vault, checked out the SSH key and injected directly into the session created by Boundary Worker. Let me also quickly show the Boundary configuration for SSH credentials injection. So if I go to the targets, and if I click the target for my Linux-based application server, you will notice that this time I have this step for injected application credentials. And if I click on that and go to the configuration for my vault. So this is the path from where uh, boundary retrieves the SSH key and injects 
directly to the session created by boundary. So that brings to the end of my demo. Uh, I hope this demo was useful and you would be able to appreciate how boundary simplifies the secure access management workflow for users to machine access. Back to you, Kelly.